Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so this actually talk was about a bug we found. Like I do bug bounty a lot uh, when I don't do my regular job. And I had lots of conflicts and thoughts about what, what should I do when I report stuff, especially in third party vendors, because third party vendors, you have much more uh, totally now. And uh, it's a big problem of the world. Like everybody's using so much uh, third parties and uh, I, I will just like, start my talk. But about me, so I'm building an AppSec marketplace currently at a company called Cider Security. Uh, this we connect to all the supply chains and this is why I'm doing so much bug bounty and I'm trying to understand all of the different vectors of the whole supply chain. But I do also bug, bu bug bounty, so I was in the H1702 last week here in Vegas and I was in the Bug Bash uh, event, so I'm already two weeks in Vegas, I don't know nothing. <laughs> I'm, it's hard for me. Uh, I do some security research, so I uh, created some CVE bugs. I'm a developer, I'm a problem maker and a solver. So usually what I do in the company, I just like make problems for everybody and then help them solve them back. So, and I do Paladin work, so I just like create an aura for every cybersecurity stuff over here. Uh, one day while I was hunting, in the Ambassador World Cup, that was a few months ago, there was an uh, Ambassador World Cup, lots of, comp lots of uh, countries participated in this event and uh, we, were able, we were supposed to hack together as a country uh, toward the getting points. Uh, it was a pretty cool event uh, and I met some good people over there, Gibroni over here, uh, we hacked some stuff and uh, uh, we just like went over, but then uh, I don't know some of you from the bug bounty world know uh, Tal Tomer Zeit and Gal Nagli, and uh, we we together we found a bug, uh, we created a CV for it, and I will talk a bit about this bug. But before that, there was a previous bug. Oh, you can't see it here. So, oh fuck, you can't see it over here also. So the TLDR of this is we found a bug in a place called uh, a plugin called Elementor. Uh, the Elementor plugin was installed in about, at that time, I think it was like 8 million or uh, more nine, 9 to 10 million, depends who, who counts, uh, websites around the world. And this plug is like a site building website. So you can create your own site like Wix or other uh, kinds of solutions. And you, you have different capabilities. So over there in that bug specifically, you had a light box settings that you can send a base64 code. And this base64 will go eventually in the JavaScript and execute some stuff. And someone found out that you can just like add HTML and this sets unsecure HTML into the code. And this creates like a DOM based uh, cross site scripting. Uh, attack on uh, in this bug. So we scanned a lot of websites and one of our targets had this uh, this affected bug, but we couldn't find it. Didn't it, it was patched and wasn't affected. So we just like went full into it and started reading the code and started to see like can we bypass this protection. So when you see over here in the previous one, the HTML content had this e.html, e is the payload that we were, send, uh, we were sending. And the HTML just like got into the set HTML content and they fixed it. Afterwards, they fixed it and they uh, just deleted the HTML so you can't set it anymore. But then we saw there's different like type types. So you have video, you have image, you have slideshow. And we went over all of these types and wanted to look at the different areas. So for set video, uh, for instance, this was the function, and anybody can see what's the problem here, like five seconds? No, <laughs> I, I, we researched it a bit, and this is like the code itself, and if you can see over in the N, T is jQuery, you see the T is jQuery, it's uh, getting stuff, and then if the E video type is hosted, then it goes into a different case, and it creates like a video parameter with N. Now N, is the extension of the data of a source URL autoplay and the video params. 
So whatever we put into video params will be converted into a attribute into the video uh, HTML content. So this is actually the bug. And then if, you, if we continue and we just created this error, we have uh, an error. So the video cannot load. And then an error runs our payload inside. And this is, again, base64 encoding and adding it into the lightbox settings. And then when we run it, we are able to execute code in a DOM-based scenario. DOM-based means that the server doesn't seed anything. Like, if you attack someone, it's silent, no logs, no nothing, nobody knows about it. It's the most fun bugs and the most hard bugs for forensics and the instant response to understand what happened. Um, so a bit of a POC in the demo. And uh, actually, the bug bounty, they asked us to do a full impact POC. So we created a payload that this is like a, a normal admin user that is, has uh, access to a test page. And we create like a, a page uh, free, free. And when you see over here, it just like created a new user. So you create like a hacker one user. And this is actually what we did in the payload. We asked for the nonce to get like access to uh, the CSRF token. And with the CSRF token, we submit again a, f a form, a request to WordPress to create a new user. And then when someone clicks this link, he just like a new admin user pops up inside the system. And we can access it. So I think this was uh, the PLC, and we showed it. Uh, no. Uh, a bit about like DOM based and like why I love them. They are scary. I, t I told you a bit about like how effective they are, and they are no, not not much people look for them because it's uh, looking at JavaScript and looking at minified code, and it's very hard to understand. You need to know code and to go and uh, look at all the different flows inside them. But once you get them, you actually the client is sending a request to the server, and then it attacks himself. So there is no, the server doesn't know. There, uh, like if I would want to tell some client of us to protect himself of it, he doesn't have any way to protect himself. Like there's no WAF that you can put in. And this is uh, pretty interesting to see. Like uh, uh, just like we scanned the whole internet and we saw like 8 million websites. So from different versions, as you can see here, lots of versions are old versions like so you have like this whole range of uh, vulnerable so we submitted we submitted it to a few bugs uh, actually and they told us no it's a duplicate because we didn't fix the bug from last year so <laughs> it was like funny uh, i don't know why but we have so much stuff over there if you can go scanning and you find a new target uh, then just add me as like a one percent collaboration or something but um so my, my biggest question was, now we found this problem, what can we do about it? Like, what's the best way to approach it? Like, uh, if you've seen the, the Don't Look Up, like, uh, can I come saying to the world, like, no, this is a problem. You have to do it now. You have to fix everything. Uh, and what is the best scenario of fixing stuff? So now, this is not a log4j. It's not a shell shock. Maybe one day I will find a log for J and it will be fun for me. But for now, I'm imagining like what will happen if this was a CVSS 10 and um, Heartbleed, log for J, shell shock, whatever problem you found, uh, you've heard about in the past uh, that gave a CVSS 10 or even a 9. And now the question is like, what should I do? Should I go to the money side? I want to get as many, much money, money from uh, much money, money from this possibly without going into the illegal area, like going only legal? Do I want like, to create a CV and let everybody know about it? Do I want like, recognition of how what's, I did a good job? Here, this is my recognition. Everybody know about me. I'm cool. Uh, I don't know. I played with it for five hours and found it. So I don't know how good is it. But then I talked with some random dude over last week. And he told me this is a new slide. I just put it on. Release it on Pastebin and see what it does. Uh, I think like this is a, I don't know if it's a good idea or not, but it happens. So like Log4j was something like that. Like uh, there was the, um, uh, the Alibaba was in a fight with the government and then they just like released it and everybody, 
who panicked from Log4j over here? Like, who were dead knights? Uh, <laughs> So yeah, we have a lot of people over here that did lights and days and like, I don't think it's the best way to release something like this, but I don't know what's, what is the best way. So this is like a bit of my, my thought process, but what I'm thinking is the best is to notify the affected vendor first, wait for a response and fix. And then it can take a few weeks or months and then start like a, a submit a CVE, disclose privately to affected users, and at the end release the CVE and let everybody handle the, uh, that they don't know about it. It's a good way, this is a responsible disclosure way. I have some problems with it because I wasn't attacking the vendor itself. I was attacking a target. So now the question is like, should I tell the target or the vendor first, like who, who should I tell first about this? Because I, I'm, when I'm attacking a target, I'm, he, he is my customer, like I'm pretty much NDA'd with him. I'm hacking on his target and if I find something, I am obliged to tell him first. So I have this vendor and uh, the target, so I don't know what to tell. So maybe I, I will first tell the target and the vendor at the same time. So I'm looking at that, but then, I have other targets, so I have a whole list of many domains, and I found this uh, like uh, say Elementor XSS, and I have now a list of uh, 200 targets. I just uh, searched in my database. No, I don't have a database. Uh, I need to do one, but uh, I can search in my database of all the targets and see how oh, I, I with uh, these targets have Elementor. Let's uh, see if they can if they are vulnerable to this bug, and then start disclosing to them, because I'm in all of these types of public and private programs. I feel like I need to tell them also first because they hired me to tell them about this as a bug hunter. So now I'm telling like a lot of customers and their teams and their teams are also doing security research by day and bug bounty by night and they can start taking my stuff and now it's not a secret anymore. Uh, so it's uh, like, do I, have a, do I have a mutual NDA with them? Like they are not allowed to use my tactics? Uh, I don't know, like uh, this is stuff that are really advanced inside bug bounty, but we didn't solve them properly yet. Um, I expect the company sometimes to pay for me for third party disclosures. Now, when I ask a lot of people, and I don't know, uh, I can ask over here because you're a fun crowd, who thinks you should pay for third party uh, disclosures? If I tell you something, you have a problem, but in a third party, who thinks I should pay for it? by hand. So I have like, yeah, a little, like, yeah, Brian doesn't agree. Yeah, it depends on it. Yeah, so sometimes the integrator, uh, if, if it's like kindly knitted inside and it's, uh, it's um, if it's knitted inside, then you, they should pay. But then I, we, so we started submitting to these targets and targets did start to pay. And this is, we asked them, I asked them afterwards, why? Why are you paying for it? And they're saying this is good threat intelligence for me because I'm paying for threat intelligence. I know there's a CV, there's a zero day, but I don't want to start panicking like all the world will be when the CV will hit the fan and uh, everything will be, go wild. So I want to sleep safe at night and I'm willing to pay for uh, third party disclosures. I don't know if it will be full amount or how much, but they are willing to pay for it and they're willing to handle it properly. Uh, maybe they can add WAF mitigations, maybe they can add uh, uh, fixing it, uh, pressure the vendor itself and telling them privately because they have a SLA with them. So we are in a bit of a disagreement or agreement. Not all companies are the same and it's very hard to know which companies are, do want to pay and which companies won't. But you can submit and test it and uh, see and start learning on yourself. But then uh, I think they should pay, just like uh, I, I believe that there is value in telling someone even uh, that he cannot fix it directly, but the ecosystem can be fixed. Um, other questions I found is like, I talked about it before, but is it a secret? When I'm telling someone and he, now he tells the vendor, or he tells his third party, gray IT supplier that I don't trust, um, 
it goes leaks out. So this secret is harming me if I'm starting to tell people. And this is why the best thing is to do it all at once. Like rake it up, find all the targets and just submit it to everybody and make the CV as fast as possible. Sometimes it takes months and then we have a problem. Like this CV came after four months. I was quiet about it uh, because the vendor just took his time to notify everybody and understand and he didn't, it's his first time he created like a CV by himself. Last CV was just like uh, without them, their knowledge. So um, uh, when, when this can leak, then attackers can start using it. Bug hunters will start searching it. So they are taking actually, if I did the research, now this research was small, but if I did a very big research and I put lots of hours on it and then I, it gets leaked and lots of people start using it uh, and getting their own uh, nuclei templates and uh, just like uh, scanning and finding it, 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 stealing from me money from one sense of, uh, and not, not really stealing, but it's uh, taking my profits uh, as a bug hunter. But then security teams will just like start running around in circles when it does hit the fan and everybody will like, no, Log4j is coming, what can we do? Can we start like mapping every single thing in our uh, company? And uh, it's a mess. Uh, and we don't want stuff to leak. Uh, so I started like thinking about different approaches. So maybe notify the affected vendor, notify the targets themselves at the same time, like bounty hunting, wait for a fix. This can take some time. Uh, work with the vendor and then submit and release the CV uh, with them. This can be, it's less disclosure like uh, the previous one, but it's uh, still a good uh, way. I think it w it's uh, beneficial for the researcher. Uh, companies need to start paying for threat intelligence. This is, uh, and uh, they are doing it, so this is good. But small, con uh, small companies can't do it. And this is a big question, like, how can we support also small companies, not the big ones? The big ones can pay for you and it's okay, but the small ones, they, they don't have the budget to do it that. So a company without a bug bounty program doesn't, doesn't know about anything of these stuff. They are in the dark. They, they will hear about it from the news, like when everybody will be hacked or some kind of slash dot or whatever you are uh, looking at, whatever uh, news feed. Um, I also cannot scan for everything alone. I can scan, I have my own list, but I'm not invited to all the programs. Maybe someone can invite me to all bug bounty programs and then it can be nice. But I'm not invited to everything, so I don't know who, is, uh, who can I scan, who I can't. Uh, and uh, this is uh, like companies do have different policies of accepting third party submissions. So there are, I can just go for the money. This is, uh, this is usually, I see some people doing this at the end because they don't, they're not enough in the industry and they, they see it as a, they actually do bug bounty for full time. And then this is actually Im impacts their income. So if you want to do it full time and the money is very important for you because you're doing it full time, then you need to notify the affected targets, continue searching targets, and maybe, maybe these, these companies will contact the vendor eventually and the CV will come out, but maybe not. Uh, and I think like this is a, it's a bad idea. I don't think I would do that, but I know lots of people are doing it in, in the community. There's like different lines of what you can do. And I'm not judging anybody. It's just like this is, a, I'm pointing out the different tactics a bug bounty can happen. Um, there is no one correct path. There's the yellow brick road, but that's it. Uh, my path. But um, I started seeing different like ventures into internal bug bounty. Uh, that the internal bug bounty is actually a foundation that pays for, bound, for bugs that you can find on the internet. Now, they don't pay if I find it in an, if I get paid from an, a different vendor. So like for this specific for bug, I think they would pay, I don't know, something like, a, let's say the average $3,000, $4,000 on this bug. But if I go in the previous way, just submitting to everybody, I will get much more. So it's not, if I'm looking into the game and like uh, what's the most effective for me to go to the internal bug bounty, it's not that effective. It's the last resort usually. I think this should change. 
and maybe they will have more budgets and more companies working together and giving better payouts for uh, some s for this kind of research. You also have the safe harbor, uh, and you have disclosed I.O. Uh, that are trying to play with these areas and trying to look at different solutions. Um, if I would look at the solutions, but first like my adventure, so I can go to only the vendor, uh, contacting vendor only, telling him it's his problem, do whatever you want. I can contact uh, my target and the vendor. I can con uh, contact multiple uh, targets. I can dump in and paste them in, just like see what happens. I think it's the most funny thing. I won't do it, but I don't know. This is uh, maybe one day when I will be like 90 years old, just like dump it and paste them in and see what happens. Uh, I, this is, will be my CVSS 10. Uh, but for like the future and what I want like to look into, and this is a big discussion that I would want to be part of and understand is like, maybe there's like a bug bounty rev share program. If I can create a CV and know that this CV is like a part of my research and everybody that uses my CV will give me like 1% of the bounty, this can be cool for me. I can, I can live with that. Uh, this is like a long living uh, like revenue. Uh, if it will be good, then it, may, it will be good for us. Also, I enter a bug bounty for third parties. What happens when I find a third party? Can I go to the internet bug bounty? and tell them and uh, maybe we need uh, like a uh, kind of budget for this area. I was talking also about mutual disclosure agreements. This is important because I, when I submit a bug, I'm NDA to them. They're not NDA to me. Or I don't know how much they are NDA to me when I'm telling them about this bug. And this is part of uh, when you go full bug bounty, it's, it's a problem and you need to understand like the consequences of uh, we had in hacker one I think uh, a problem that uh, one of the employees is started like, using tactics and we have other areas that you can see when people start submitting new tactics then you see everybody following them and it's good it's good for our industry it's good for everybody to share as much as knowledge but we need to have a way how to create it in an uh, efficient way in uh, a standardized way so we won't harm, harm ourselves in this process. So I don't have all the answers, and I have lots of questions. And this is the uh, moment you can ask me anything you want, whatever you want, like, uh, I don't know, if you have any questions. Brian, you, you have a question? No? There's a microphone so everybody can hear. Yeah. You go find the bug and you send it out to all the, the integrator or the, the supply chain, you send it out to all the affected websites, each one's paying, you know, across the board. But ultimately it, it the fix of the code is is that, that supply, the elementor, you know. So yeah. like, if they just paid what maybe it's worth, is it then the same problem to go to everyone else to get maybe the smaller amounts of money from who's it's affecting, but but if the you know elementor is paying out a large sum, you don't have to go through all that work and then you just move on to the next thing. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. What are I your think, thoughts? Yeah. yeah, I think like it's a good solution, but because we have lots of startups and lots of companies that don't have these budgets and bug bounty, like elementor doesn't have the budget of a big Fortune 500 company so we got paid more like specifically in bounties or in one bounty we got paid more bounty in other targets than the elemental one and I'm not saying something bad about the elemental like bug bounty it's great that you have it but it's uh, you can't expect everybody to pay for uh, the same because they have different budgets and different use cases so yeah yes so I have a question. You uh, you mentioned that you scan. Uh, can I can I speak closer? Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned that you almost scan like the whole internet to see like how many websites like were affected by the bug. So which tool exactly did you use? So we went with two tactics. First of all, uh, Gal has uh, like lists. Uh, Nagli is uh, he's doing bug bounty and recon a lot. So he has lists of lots of domains that uh, have. Uh, 
uh, bug bounty programs and we scanned them. But also I went to Built With and bought a list for $100 and like it paid off. And just like you can get a list uh, of everything. So, so this is just like a, like a big list of websites, random websites? You can get or? Built With, like uh, you uh, say you can select a technology and just down, buy the whole list of all the domains that they have. And then the game is to start uh, trying to test which has a bug bounty program and which doesn't. This is the hard part. There's no standardized way to do it. There's like also private programs but, uh, and matching, and you don't know usually which company is behind a domain. But this is the worst. This took us the most time. The research <laughs> was like actually took us a few hours, but then finding out who is vulnerable and can we submitted them, do they have a VDP, a VLP, do they have a bug bounty program, what kind, where, uh, then like talking about dupes and uh, communicating with the teams, this is the most time uh, that we, we took our effort on. Any more questions? That's it. So thank you very much. Ha, ha, ha.